Hi there, Imagine owners. Today on your 2021 Grand Design Imagine XLS, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to replace your equalizers with Dexter's Easy Flex. And this is what our equalizers look like when they're installed. We can see that it replaces our old one here. We also get heavy duty upgraded shackles with it. And these are wet bolts in them so we can grease those to ensure that they stay lubricated and operating for a long time. I personally prefer wet bolts over the plastic bushings because if you're maintaining your wet bolts here and keeping them greased regularly, they will usually significantly outlast the plastic ones. Now, I will say if you don't ever wanna to have to maintain your trailer and do any greasing on it, you can. I would recommend to stay with the plastic ones because uh, they will outlast these if you if you don't grease these they don't last very long but if you grease them they will last quite a bit longer you can see the main difference here though between our old one that we replaced and the new one or the ones that's probably on your trailer we've got a dampening mechanism that's here in the center that will take the impacts uh, that it's transferring from one axle to the other one when they when you hit uh, bumps down on the road it's a nice beefy rubber piece here in the middle that absorbs all that. And this is a great upgrade if you are finding that your bushings and stuff are wore out on your shackles or on your leaf spring ends. Uh, you can grab this kit and you're not only gonna be fixing those damaged and broken parts, but you're gonna be upgrading it, uh, which is gonna just extend the life of the components in your trailer. And the way it extends the life of the components in the trailer is again, you're absorbing a lot of that road impact. So cabinets and other things inside that rattle around a lot and make it cracks and things on them, uh, it's gonna reduce some of that so you don't get it as much. And that's gonna pretty much work across the entirety of your trailer. And all throughout it, it's gonna help minimize that, that uh, dampening, I mean, minimize the forces you get from the road by dampening them because metal fat fatigue is a thing. If something keeps taking a beating over and over and over, it eventually will snap. You ever bent a spoon back and forth a bunch of times, you've probably found out that it will eventually break. So that's kind of the idea behind this. If we minimize all the vibrations, just everything on here is just gonna last a little bit longer. And if you have some items in here that are a little bit more sensitive to vibrations, uh, you won't have to worry about those as much. About ready to put our new equalizer up, but I figured we'd take a quick look at the two um, before we install it, just to see as a comparison. One, we wanna make sure that when we're replacing our old one that we're using a similar uh, hole pattern, we can see that it lines up with our new one. So that's gonna allow our suspension to be in the correct position that it was before. But we're now adding the dampening mechanism that we see here into our equalizer. The previous one here, this is just solid metal. So if you're going down the road and your front axle here hits a bump, it's gonna go up. And what does that do? That causes this side to pivot downward. So all the force that's going into one axle is getting transferred through this into your other axle and vice versa, back and forth. You can see a split in the middle. So when we get, uh, we hit a bump here with our front axle, this goes to twist up. It doesn't immediately push down on the other one. It actually kind of twists here and pushes the force into our dampener. And then after it's transferred through the dampener, any excess force that wasn't dampened gets transferred to the other one. So that greatly reduces uh, force and vibration from the road transferring into your trailer, uh, getting absorbed into our giant absorption pad there. We'll also notice that the old one had the same uh, never fail bushings, and you can even see that they're pretty wallowed out. And this is a fairly new trailer, so they are uh, definitely not as nice, in my opinion, as the bronze bushings. Um, if you're never gonna maintain your trailer, and if you're not gonna spend the time to uh, check it over and grease up the bushings, then you might wanna stay with these. They typically will outlast your bronze bushings if you're not greasing them. But if you're maintaining your bushings and greasing them when you take it out and stuff, checking your trailer over, these will greatly outlast these ones as long as you're staying up on the maintenance. All right, we're gonna begin our installation by getting our trailer lift it up. We've got our lift here at the back. If you're doing this at home, you can just use uh, just jack stands in your floor jack. Just start one corner at a time, you can lift it up. We need to get it up off the ground so we can uh, spin our wheel assemblies there. And actually, there's kind of a strange noise on this one. Bit of a drag sound. So we'll take a look at that probably at some point. Uh, but you wanna get this up, get your wheels to where you can spin them, and then we can go ahead and remove them. Now, if you don't have an impact, and you're doing this kind of by hand with all hand tools before you lift it, you'll wanna make sure you crack your 
uh, lug nuts loose. You don't want to take them all the way off, just crack them loose like a turn, and that's good enough. Because once you get it up in the air and it's spinning like this, you're going to have a real hard time getting them off if they're still tight. Now, if you've got an impact, it should zip them off of there. We're going to go ahead and remove them with a three-quarter inch socket. After we get our lug nuts removed, we'll just set this aside and we're going to remove the other tire on this side as well. All right, now that we've got both of those guys out of the way, you're going to now need a floor jack and a jack stand, or what's even better is two floor jacks because uh, we need to support our axles here when we go to take our components loose to replace our equalizers. And having a jack under there is gonna allow us to kinda shift those up and down as necessary to make sure everything kinda lines up. We're gonna be using a combination jack stand, jack. And we've got these right here. So this is what we're gonna be using. We'll just set that on there underneath. And if you look, that I've got a nice gap there between the jack and the bottom of the axle. Because we may need to go down some when we're doing our installation. Like when we go to drive out our bushings to replace them with the wet bolts, we need to have it come down enough. So that's why we need to make sure we got that gap there uh, to allow us to do so. So I'm gonna now take my handle here and we're just gonna jack up the jack until it just touches right there on the bottom of the axle. And when you jack it up, you want to try to stay underneath the leaf spring stack. We don't want to jack up at the middle of our axle, which could potentially bend it. So yeah, that's it right there. We just need to kind of touch it. We may, we may put like a hair of, uh, of pressure on it, but that's all we need. And we're going to do the same thing with the other axle. So now that we've got both of these jacked up, we're ready to start removing our hardware. All of our bolt heads are on this side, so we're gonna be on the other side to remove the nuts. So you can go ahead and if you got a creeper, grab one of those because it's gonna be easier laying underneath. All right, so this is the back side of our equalizer. These are those nuts that we were talking about here. We're gonna remove all five of the ones you see here. We're gonna use an 11 16 socket. A good impact should zip these right off of there, um, but uh, if you don't have one, you might wanna grab your breaker bar. And this particular one in the middle here, after we got it removed, we're actually gonna thread that back on just a couple of turns. And now we're just gonna fully remove the rest of these. After you remove the pair of nuts, these guys typically just slide right apart. So it's not coming out of there super easy. That's no big deal. That just means we probably need to adjust our jacks here just a little bit to allow them to line up a little better. And I think what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna loosen the front axle just a hair here. Usually as that comes down, it brings them closer together. It didn't, so that's no big deal. If uh, loosening that one a little bit, we just tightened it back up. If that didn't do it, we can go over to the other one and try loosening this one a little. All right, that actually took us the way we didn't wanna go. So all we're gonna do now is just tighten it up and jack it up some. If we're just trying to find like the sweet spot where these two pieces kind of sit in there by themselves, because usually they pull out of there fairly easily. And that's kind of a sweet spot right there. You can see I got good play in it and then it pops out of there. It's really mainly what you're looking for there. So now we got that one removed. We're gonna do the same thing on the other one. Remove those nuts, pull that back piece off. Usually once you pull this one out, the other one slides right out of there because it's nice and free. Now for this guy, the reason we threaded the nut back on there really wasn't to hold this thing in here because this bolt is pressed into this end. It's got a serrated edge on it on the inside of the bolt that's holding it in there. We put the nut back on it to protect the threads from the abuse that I'm about to put on it because we need to just take our hammer and we're gonna drive that bolt out. Now you could hit directly on the threads, but what can happen is you can mushroom the bolt and then it may not wanna come out of there after you spread it open. It also protects the thread, so if we wanted to reuse this bolt, we could because we're uh, saving it from getting damaged from our, our abuse here. Just giving it a couple of good whacks until we get a gap. You can see it's moved here, it's come out some. And once you get it started, it drives out 
significantly easier. And we can go ahead and remove this nut now. You can see how loose it is in there. And we'll just pull it right out. And our threads are still good on the end. We didn't damage the bolt any. Now we're replacing this with the parts in our kit, but it's nice to have for just a spare. And you can actually use these bolts here, which we're gonna show you right now, as a tool in our next step. Our bushings here, that's in the end of our leaf springs. We're gonna be upgrading those to wet bolts to match our equalizer here. And you can see it's got the plastic, uh, never fail self lubing type of bushing in there. And those ones do not work with grease. If you grease those, the grease can actually break down the, the material here and cause it to prematurely wear. So we need to get that bronze bushing installed so that way we get uh, proper operation of our new wet bolts. So we'll take this bolt here that we just drove out and we can use this to drive this out of there. It's got this nice little lip on it here that works fairly nicely for catching on the lip of your bushing. And we can just knock it on out of there. All right, so we got that one removed. Still save your bolt. We can still use this for the installation of our new bushing. First, I'm just gonna do a quick little check. I'm just seeing if it feels like there was any damage. Now, this is a fairly new trailer, so it's unlikely since our bushing was still intact. It's when these bushings get a split down them all the way and they're not round anymore that you really need to do your inspection of your eyelet here. Cause that means that our uh, bolt that was in here wasn't being controlled and held in there snug. It was allowed play and it was moving around likely uh, wallowing out this hole. So everything seems fine there. So we're just gonna grab our bushings now and we can get that installed. And we're also gonna do the same thing with this one. So we'll drive this one out as well. All right, now for installing our bushing. This is the, the new bushing for our wet bolt that we're planning on putting in here. You can see it's bronze. We'll use our bolt here that we just used to drive out the old bushing to install the new one. Because we don't want to hit directly onto the end of this. Again, same thing, you would end up mushrooming it. You'd probably never get it in there. So we can use this bolt here to uh, give us a nice surface that will drive it in there. So we're just pushing it in and we're just gonna tap it on in. All right, and we're bottomed out. Same thing here, we bring it out. I always like to put the nut on there just, just as a precaution. And you can see it's nice and snug, but it is coming out of there and then we'll remove our nut. And we can even use one of these guys to finish tapping it through. And there we go, we've got our bushing replaced. We'll just repeat that for the other eyelet over here. So they already are installed here on the equalizer, so we don't need to do anything there. And we don't need to install one here in the middle. And we actually don't even need a wet bolt here in the middle because you can see there's the bushing there. It pivots on this piece and there's our grease uh, fittings there for greasing that. So don't use a wet bolt on this one. All right, so now we'll grab our bolts from our kit and we'll get those installed on there. You will get a little bit of anti-seize. That's for that non-wet bolt just so uh, when we go to, if we ever have to service this trailer, you know, in years down the road and we need to replace this potentially, you know, who, who knows how many years it might be. Uh, if we don't put the NICs on there, it just makes it more difficult to remove this. So this is just kind of taking care of that next guy. This has a different size bolt and your wet bolts too. So it has a different size, different size threads on the end here for the nut. So just pay attention to that. It is a different nut than the other ones. It doesn't have the same kind of shoulder that you see there. So we can go ahead and get this hung. I'm gonna just cut this open and put some on the shoulder of our bolt here. Take our equalizer here. You can see there, there's no front and back on these. It's just a mirrored image of itself. So you can just lift it up there. And then we're gonna slide our bolt through. We're gonna go from the outside towards the inside like it was previously. There we go. 
and then we can take our nut and thread it on the other side. Now, we're gonna go ahead and snug it down a little bit, but we don't wanna just go crazy barreling on, down on this, because the head of this bolt has uh, those serrated edges like we were talking about. We can show you that it's similar on one of our wet bolts here, it's got that edge. Because we don't want this bolt to be able to spin. This is a pivot point right here. We want our devices to spin on this. We don't want the bolt to spin. So if we tighten this down, just using the nut, what can happen is when you draw this in, it can damage the serrated edges and then the bolt can spin. If the bolt spins, uh, it can get metal on metal contact. When it's spinning and it wallows out the holes and then you got issues down the road. So what we'll do is we'll just put a little bit of snug, a little kind of a preload on it by tightening it a little bit, and then we'll drive it in to get those serrated edges seated. All right, so I'm just gonna snug it up a little bit. We're gonna use a 7-8 socket to do so. And we're just kind of keeping it up. It's drawing it in some, but we don't, again, we don't want to do, go too crazy on it because uh, it could potentially damage it. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna switch to a socket and our hammer here. And we're not gonna use the socket actually on this one because we don't need to. But if it, had, if it was a wet bolt, we'll use our socket to go over the wet bolt. But since this one doesn't have the wet bolt on it, we can just strike directly on the head. All right, we tapped it in a little bit. We'll snug it up a little more. We might have to tap it again a little bit more because we want to make sure it's all the way flush with the surface there. All right, that's looking pretty flush. We can see the uh, anti-seize and stuff that we put on there kind of squeezed out a little bit. So we're just going to put a little more snug on it and then we'll torque these bolts all at the end, so. And that's good. We just got a little bit just to make sure it stays on there snug. Can pivot on our bolt just fine. So now we can install the new shackles. All right, so this is our new shackles that come in our kit here. These are gonna slide in from the outside in, and this kind of pivots so we can use that to line these up as necessary here. Maybe we'll start with the other side since these ones don't wanna line up quite as well. It's no big deal. We can just start over here. There we go. Slide that in. On the other side, we're gonna take the other end of the shackle here and slide that in. All right, so now we've got our Shackle with the bolts installed on it slid through. We'll take our other shackle, slide that on the other side. That needs to slide over the shoulder of the bolt, not just the threads. And then we can install our nuts. And I'm gonna go ahead and just zip these down. We don't need to go crazy tight on these just yet either, because again, we're gonna torque them all at the end. Just trying to take out a lot of the play and stuff. 11 sixteenths once again. All right, we stopped. And we'll stop. So we got those on. Now we're just gonna repeat that for the other side here. Now this side here is typically a little bit trickier just because we've now no longer have that free play from our equalizer. So we'll be using our jacks to line these up, just like we did when we were trying to remove it. We're just trying to get it into kind of a free sanding position where we can kind of just slide this in. So it's looking like maybe if we try lowering this one a little bit. We lowered that the one side a little bit and that didn't seem to do what we needed it to do. So we're gonna go over to the other side now and we're going to adjust this side. Oop, there we go, lower that one a little bit. So now they're too close together, but that's okay. As we bring it up, we should find a sweet spot where we can kind of just slide them together. Getting real close. And that looks pretty close there. Sometimes you do have to tap it just a little bit.
there we go. We weren't tapping on it real hard, just a little bit, just because there's a little bit of pressure on there. So we got that one in now, it's the same thing. We're gonna take our new shackle. You can see how much thicker this is than our old ones. Much heavier duty going with these. And this will just slide on the other side again and we'll put our nuts on. Same thing with this. If you can't get this to slide over uh, those ends, you might need to lift your jack up or down slightly in order to get, the, get that installed on there. All right, now we'll move on to the eyelets here at the end. So we're gonna take these off. These are fairly similar to the ones that we've removed already. It's 11 16 for the nut on the inside. After we remove the nut, we're gonna thread it back on. This is almost the exact same as we did when we took out that center equalizer bolt. Cause these ones you always have to drive out of here. Again, for the same reason that serrated edge is holding it in there. So we put the nut back on, we're gonna grab our hammer here and give her a whack. See if it moved any. We didn't get any movement, so we gotta keep on going. She's in there pretty stiff. We'll loosen up the nut just a little bit because it looks like it did move a little tiny bit. All right. So she still doesn't want to seem to move. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower our jacks down just to make sure we don't have any pressure on them. That's why we tried to just barely touch it before. But now that we got this new equalizer installed, it's possible that the thickness of the metal um, is just a hair sticker and stuff. So it may be putting a little more pressure on it than we think that we've got. So we're just gonna go to our jacks here, kind of relieve the pressure and then just kind of retouch them to it. All right, after relieving a little bit of pressure and going at it again, we got movement out of it. We can see we got a gap there now. We can go ahead and remove our nut. Often, once you get that first movement, it drives out usually quite a bit easier. Yeah, you see there, that next tap just took it right on most of the way. We still got a little bit of pressure on it, so we're gonna use our jack now. Try to reassess that, see if we can't relieve some of it. I'm thinking if we come down a little bit, that might help. And that's pretty close. I can kind of feel just a hair play in there. But what we can do is we can take any of the old bolts that we'd removed and use those to assist us driving this out of there. Just one of the old bolts. We can kind of put it here on the head to try to drive it out of there. Almost there, still quite a bit of pressure on it. If you've got a pry bar, you can use that as well to assist you to remove some pressure. All right, there we go. So now that we've got that removed, we still need to drive out the bushing that's in there. So we're gonna once again use our jacks to try to get this to pop out of this hole here so we can drive that out. All right, so we just lowered the jack down and it was allowed it to drop down. I did kind of have to do, give it a couple of taps with the hammer because the metal was just kind of getting caught a little bit, but it did come down. We'll take that, not this bolt, don't use your wet bolt. Make sure you're using an old bolt and we'll drive this one out of here. Once we get this one drove out, we're gonna drive in our bronze bushing, just like we did with the other ones. All right. Now we'll get our bushing, we'll drive that in. And the other leaf spring that you've got on your other axle, on the very opposite side on this side here, you're gonna have another one of these. So we're gonna be repeating this another time over there as well. All right, so now that we drove the new bushing in, we're gonna be lifting up on our jack, trying to get our eyelet to line back up where it was. And if we look in there, we can see that we're too far towards the rear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually bring this up higher than what it's intended to be. And then we're gonna go over to the other side, our front axle here, and we're actually going to, looks like we're gonna be lifting up a little bit on this side, and that's gonna draw, you see how it drew it towards the front a little bit for us? It's kind of pulled it that direction. We can then come back to our other jack. It's easier if you've got, if you've got two jacks, you can do this with just a jack and a jack stand, but you can see how having two points of movement really gives you a lot more fidelity in what you're able to accomplish here. And now we'll bring this one down a little bit. And you might have to 
tap it a, a little bit. There we go. Looks like we need to come down just a little bit further. And that's looking like that's probably pretty close. So we're just gonna assess, grab our wet bolt here and see if we can't get it started in there. It's looking pretty darn close there. And we wanna be able to slide it in if we can. We really don't want to have to drive anything in if we don't have to. We're pretty close here. Might just see if we can't tweak it with the pry bar a little bit. All right, looks like we're gonna just have to move the jacks a little bit more. We're not quite there yet. Looks like it needs to go slightly towards the front and slightly down just a little. So for front, remember that was lifting up on that front axle. So we're gonna go ahead and do that a little bit. Okay, we're just a hair high, which isn't necessarily too bad because we can always kind of push down just a little bit because these also these leaf springs every time i've gone to do a job like this the leaf spring stack always cocks just a little bit one direction and so you're going to have one side that's slightly higher than the other and just kind of makes it difficult to get these installed it's usually pretty common for these end bolts to be more difficult to install than the entire leaf spring portion in the middle all right so we got that to slide in looks like we're hitting just a little bit on the opposite side so see if we can't pry that a little bit nope so we'll use our jacks all right so that's pretty close looks like we are going to have to just give it a little bit of a tap that's okay we'll grab our socket we're going to put the square end over the grease circ there so we don't uh contact it and we're just going to baby tap it on in all right, so now we've got it all the way driven in to the point where our serrated edges have contacted our surface. And this is just like the other one there. We're gonna put our nut on, pull a little bit of pressure on it, uh, drive it in, and then just kind of back and forth to get this one fully drawn in. All right, now we got this one fully installed. Again, it was the same process as that middle one. We tightened this up. We drove it with that socket on here to prevent from uh, damage in the zerk fitting until we got it nice and flush. So now we're just gonna head over to the front axle there and we're gonna get the one replaced on this side the same way. All right, now that we've got that last one replaced, we can go back and torque all of our bolts to the specifications outlined in our instructions. Now we can go and grease those. We're just grabbing our grease gun here. And we wanna make sure it's going in the uh, actually down the shaft. So it look, may look like right there that a lot of the grease didn't go in, but as we take our camera around the side, you can see that the grease is squeezing out the other side of our bushing there. So that one's fully greased. We're just gonna move on to the next one. It's not uncommon for you to have some that kind of goops up around the fittings. Uh, just if you're not on there perfectly straight, it gets, you get a little bit that squirts out around that fitting. And our, our gun here has been used pretty heavily here at the shop, so the fitting kind of wears out over time and you get that leakage like that. But we do want to make sure that each one is getting the grease coming out the other side like that. That'll ensure that we are getting grease all the way through. And don't forget your equalizer fittings here in the middle. They don't take much. You saw there just like a half, a, a pump and a half was enough to, uh, to get that to grease. There's also one on the other side. We're gonna hit that one with just a little bit as well. All right, so now we've got all of our Hardware torqued down, everything's greased up at this point. We are ready to get our wheels back on. Make sure you get your jacks out from underneath of there. And everything's good. And we can go ahead and reinstall the wheels on this side. And then you can go over to the other side and perform the same installation over there. And then we'll just tighten them down. It's always best to tighten them down in a star pattern. And then once we get it all back on the ground after finishing the other side, we wanna make sure that we torque all of our wheels to the manufacturer's specifications. And that completes our installation of Dexter's Easy Flex on our 2021 Grand Design Imagine.